This video is going to be about polar alignment of the mount. And uh, my mount here, same one I've shown in other videos, is an Orion Atlas EQ. And this is the old version. has the old kind of hand controller. So this doesn't do go to or any of that. But polar alignment of the physical part of the mount is still the same thing. Now really all you're doing is trying to make it so that you track the stars going across the sky from east to west with as little trouble as possible. So the first thing you try to do is you want to make sure that you're pointed north with this part of your mount. Of course the general idea if you've seen people with their polar alignment scopes is you look down through here and you look up towards the North Star Polaris and of course you don't center Polaris because it's not perfectly north but it's really close it's less than a degree. Okay here's a screenshot of a program called Carte du Ciel. I'm going to give you a little help here on how to find the North Star Polaris if you're not familiar. You got the Little Dipper over here with Polaris at the head of it there and then the Big Dipper and notice that you have what's called known as the pointer stars pointing towards the North Star. And I'm going to show you a close-up view. The celestial poles actually, that little cross there, plus sign, right next to the star Polaris. So here's a closer view. Same software, and there's Polaris, the North Star. And here in the middle, this plus, is the celestial pole, which is where you want the center of your telescope to be aligned at. And I'm moving it here. This is supposed to be one hour at a time, and it shows what happens over a period of 24 hours. So you can see that the North Star isn't exactly in the center, and that's why you don't put it exactly in the center of your polar alignment scope if you happen to have one, because if you do, this is about three quarters of a degree away, and you'd be close, but you wouldn't be where you want to be if you're doing photography and stuff like that. Okay, so here I'm going to show you another little software. This was made by a guy named Jason Dale, and this is old. This is from 2003, and it was a freebie. It's called Polar Finder or Polar Finder Scope, and what it does is it shows you the position of Polaris, how you would put it in your Polar Finder Scope, depending on what time of night it is. Like here it shows it 1.30 in the morning. It's down here. hour later, it's moved a little more. As you can see here at 3.30 in the morning, it's a little closer. By 4.30 in the morning, it's up in here, so by 5.30 or so, it'd be way up here. Okay, now, of course, in order to find Polaris, you either have to have a compass to help you find north, and also, if you use a star map so that you can learn to recognize what Polaris looks like when you see it at the head of the Little Dipper and the Big Dipper stars pointing at it, you can do that. You might live someplace where you can't see the North Star. There might be trees in the way, buildings, whatever and a compass can really make a difference. Okay, now what I have here is just a standard little hiking compass. I bought this, I think, at Walmart several years ago, and it wasn't expensive. I think I paid six or seven dollars for it, and it has kind of an interesting design. The red part of the needle always points to the north. Now when you're out hiking, you could say, like, say if you wanted to travel east, you could rotate the E, or 90 degrees, up at that arrow, and then you would turn like that and have the needle pointing in the right direction, and then you would follow this arrow. Now for us, we're thinking, well, you don't need that, but you might. Depending on where you live, your accuracy of this pointing north is going to be out of whack. And that's because the um, magnetic north is not exactly the same as it's what they call celestial north, where the North Pole, the North Star is. Now, for me, it's only off by like three or four degrees. And if you're getting it approximate, that's not a bad place to start, you know, just to get set up. Okay, so let's just say that I didn't know exactly where I was at in the beginning. I'd set my compass here, get pointed, so I'm so okay. I'm north, and then I want to adjust my mount so that the back leg back here is pointing to the north. Now that means that these two front legs here should be east and west. So if I'm checking here, it should be west. From over here, I should be seeing it's east. 
This gets you close for a beginning for that part. Now the other thing you would need to do is get your latitude set. Really doesn't matter which one you do first. But where I live here near Terre Haute in Indiana, I'm approximately 39 degrees north of the equator. So I would set it 39. And as you can probably see, it doesn't look like I'm pointed exactly at 39. Now it could be because this label that's on here is not perfect. It could also be because my driveway is not perfectly level. It's probably, I think it's the label because I've used a level finder and an angle finder to check it. The angle finder that I'm using, as you can see, isn't made for a telescope. It's made for a circular saw. It's for people that want to cut angles so that they can, you know, like woodworking or what have you. But it works for a number of things. And this one's digital and it goes down to approximately one tenth. It actually goes two decimal points, but it says it's accurate to a tenth of a degree. So I've got her out of the box. We'll turn her on. And as you can see, it gives you these digital numbers. And if you set it on somewhere level, it'll just go zeros. Now what I'm looking for based on where I live when I got on like Google Maps and looked at a satellite image of my house it said that I was approximately 39.3 degrees north of the equator so that's the number I'm looking for and it I can't get it to go dead on but it'll be close so I'll show you now my mounts not perfectly level right at the moment so what I do is I'll set it on here and try to get it to go to where I want and then I can also check it up here and this is showing off a little so I'm going to try to level out my mount better and see what it shows me. Okay my mount has a little bubble level here I'm not sure how good you can see it in there but it's not in the bubble it's not centered so what I'm going to do is adjust my legs here I can raise and lower or actually raise from this point any of the legs I can actually extend this thing up and these legs will come out like a foot and a half or something like that so I'll try to get it leveled out better here what I did was I raised this back leg about an inch leg on the east about an inch and I've got my bubble pretty well centered not sure how good that shows that but that bubbles pretty well centered currently it shows me to be at just over 40 which is a little high so now what I'll do I can adjust I've got these two here that help me adjust my north and south we balance it between those I'll be tweaking this this way and that way and I'm exaggerating a bunch because I just want to tweak it a tiny little bit. So all I'm wanting to do is move this away approximately one degree which is very little. So that means I have to loosen this back one a little and tighten this one in a little. By doing that this should push the bottom of this this away which will lower it a little so I'm just gonna loosen a little bit here tighten a little bit here and I should be seeing my number get lower which it is you can see I've got these pretty snug so they're a little got to press pretty firm on them to loosen it up there
that is pretty close as you can see if I just barely bump this thing a little bit it moves a tenth degree two tenths of a degree whatever I want around 39.3 39.35 whatever and I'm getting to such a small amount that it doesn't take much to throw it off I mean I haven't even put my telescope or weights on here yet when I put that stuff on it may tweak it out a little bit again but that doesn't mean I should drive myself nuts trying to fix it okay one of the things that I think is important to think about is uh, just how perfect do you have to have your polar alignment you've seen I'm gonna tweak quite a bit with my angle finder and get it down but uh, when I put my telescope on and my weights that's gonna throw it out just a little now if you're just doing general viewing especially if you're using low power say if you're looking at you know I mean if you're just looking at the moon or planets and stuff or low power with galaxies and stuff trying to look at big things like M31 and the Orion Nebula you don't have to be perfect with this the people that are really really trying to be perfect are people that are trying to take long exposure photographs because there's people that are trying to image things where each exposure might be two minutes three minutes five minutes there was a time when people were using film and they'd be using an hour using you know maybe even multiple hours for each one and they wanted everything just to be absolutely perfect so the stars stayed around and didn't streak and that's still what's going on there so to me how picky you need to be about this really all comes down to what you're willing to deal with I say if you're just viewing and trying to just come out and enjoy it and say I want to look at this I want to look at that get it reasonably close get it to where you're more or less north and the closer you are to it the better uh, but it doesn't have to be perfect and the same with this with when you set your north and south latitude it's great if it's perfect but especially if you're coming out and setting this up every time you do it you don't want to spend a bunch of your time trying to get it lined up you want to be able to come out and just look at stuff and if that's what you're doing just come out and try to get it to where you feel pretty comfortable with your north and then get it to where you're pretty comfortable there and you'll know when you're viewing if you're having to constantly make adjustments to get it to stay in the field of view I mean if you're off by a lot if your scope instead of pointing here is pointing way over here you're going to be constantly moving north and south and east and west trying to get it to stay in there so getting it reasonable you can do especially since I've marked my spots if I, I can get this reasonably close in a matter of a couple seconds what I did one night when I came out here and got to where I felt really good about my alignment I just took pieces of duct tape and put them around each leg on directly on the concrete and did that to all three legs and then when I lifted it up I had just little holes there showing and I sprayed black paint and made three dots and as you can see I've got lines there now one night when I did this the last time I thought I'd be really special and I took duct tape put a long piece across here and the same on the inside and that left this gap here where the spray paint would go and I did it on all three legs and one of the reasons I did it was because my little black dots of paint wear off and they get hard to find and I thought well the more of it I've got there the easier it is to find so if I'm just coming out here and just viewing I can just come out here set the legs approximately on each dot since I'm using the same spot every night this here's already set just put my stuff on there and go